this video tutorial, we'll discuss how to set up WDS bridging between two Buffalo Air Station wireless routers. We'll be using the DDWRT platform for this. The best way to start is to start with two brand new devices or two Air Station routers that have been reset to factory defaults. I also recommend switching both of the router mode switches on the back of the products to the on position. Although not a requirement, it does make it easier. So please switch both of them to the on position, uh, start both of them up, plugging them into power. Uh, we will start configuring the router device first or the primary device. So if you already have your uh, cable or DSL modem or internet connection supplied, you can uh, plug that into the WAN connection port. Uh, and then using your Mac or PC or whatever other configuration device you have, uh, plug its ethernet port into one of the switch side ports for that uh, wireless router. You will want to access the wireless router's uh, admin UI, which uh, once you have that cable plugged in, you can go to any browser and type in its IP address. So the default IP address is 192.168.11.1. Just type that into any browser. The first time, since this is a brand new device, it will ask you to set the administration username and password. So you can go ahead and do that. Uh, it's just a one-time process. And we'll press the change password. At some point, it'll make me re-log in with that information, um, probably next time I change a page. So this device has already, uh, already automatically found my internet connection and I'm ready to go. Uh, you can configure the device before setting up bridging, but I generally recommend to set up the bridge and get that working first uh, and then set up some of your more advanced settings. That way if you have any problem, you can easily reset back to factory defaults and not waste a lot of time. Um, all of the WDS setup for both products will be done in this wireless tab area. And we will actually not be using the WDS sub-tab item here. We'll be configuring it all through this physical interface area under basic settings. So since this is our router device, uh, we'll go ahead and make this our primary WDS, sort of our master device. And to do that, what we we'll want to do is change the wireless mode for the physical interface from AP to WDS AP. Um, I recommend every time you make a settings change to press the save button just to make sure it, uh, it successfully saves it to memory. Do not press the apply button until you're done configuring the whole device. This will save you a lot of time and configuration uh, frustration. So I repeat again, use the save button uh, until you're done at the end when you want to apply all the settings. And we're going to go ahead and leave the wireless network mode as mixed and the channel width is full uh, 20. You can change those and you'll have to change them on the other device, but um, it's best to use the defaults just to make sure that the bridge is working uh, and then you can tweak accordingly. Um, so what we want to do here is we're going to leave all of these default. Uh, we do want to change the wireless network name to something that's maybe easier to remember than uh, just a bunch of uh, numbers and letters. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and name this bridge because that's easy for me to remember, and that is essentially what I'm creating here, which is a wireless bridge. Now, this SSID will be only used by the other uh, access point in the, S in the WDS environment. So this is not the SSID you'll be using to connect your uh, your devices, or if your friend comes over, it's not what they're going to see in the scan, uh, the scan list when they're looking for new networks. Um, because I don't want it to show up for my neighbors and, and uh, all my other devices, I'm going to go ahead and disable the uh, wireless SSID broadcast as well. And I'll press the save button just because we're kind of done with that configuration. Now, in most cases, people are going to want to have a wireless network that they do have their devices connect to that's just sort of a regular access point. Um, so to do that, we want to deploy a virtual interface, which is basically a second network um, using the same radios and same AP um, that has different security and different SSID. And we just want it to be a regular AP. Uh, this is not going to be used for WDS. Um, and this one, we want to give it a wireless network name or SSID that would show up in scan lists and uh, one that you could tell your friend. So I'll go ahead and name it Buffalo-Network because that's easy to remember. In this case, I do want the SSID to broadcast so people see it. Um, and I'll press the Save button. So now I have both of my SSIDs ready, uh, ready to be applied. Um, and again, to repeat, you know, this is the network that my devices will connect to, and this is the core uh, AP net, uh, WDS network that uh, the other AP will connect to. Um, now we do want to set up security for those, so we'll go to this next tab, which is wireless security. And here you can see both of the uh, interfaces. You see the bridge interface as well as the virtual interface, which is called Buffalo-Network. Um, you can set up different security between these two. And in most cases, I do recommend that you set up different security. Um, because I know the other device is a Buffalo access point that supports the most uh, advanced security, I'm going to go and change my bridge to uh, the strongest and fastest security, which will be WPA2 personal. 
Um, and then I'm going to change the uh, WPA algorithm to AES. And I'll go ahead and press the Save button. Uh, I will set up a, a different security mode for my Buffalo network because there's a lot of other devices out there, maybe legacy devices that don't support AES or anything like that. So I'm going to pick a pretty broad yet secure um, protocol for this one, and I'll do WPA2 personal mixed mode. Um, take a second, and uh, some other options come available. I'm going to change to TKIP and AES, so uh, we can technically support both. Um, and uh, what I'll do is check the unmask here, and I can provide two different passwords. Um, I recommend them being different passwords because uh, the, the bridge is just unique for the uh, WDS system, while the other uh, is a password you might be giving out to, uh, to guests um, or be typing into your, your other devices. So in this case, I recommend a relatively advanced uh, password, you know, multiple uh, uh, numbers and letters. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll pick a very easy password to remember, which is all lowercase password. And then I'll set a different one for my uh, actual device network, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and I can go ahead and press save. So at, now I can press the apply settings for the router device because all of the bridge configurations are configured. And this page will reload. Um, and I like actually leaving this page up because it does have uh, both my SSIDs and my passwords available for me. Um, so when I configure my next device, I can check it against this. Um, this is a good case to use a tab browsing or to open a second uh, uh, browser window and configure your next device. Now, since our other device was also uh, you know, reset to factory defaults or is new out of the box, uh, it will share the same configuration um, process as this other one. So at this point, you want to disconnect your uh, PC or your Mac's Ethernet cable from the router device and plug it into one of the uh, LAN ports um, on the switch side of the device you want to use for the WDS client um, or the repeater device. And we'll go ahead and plug that in. My PC will connect to that. Uh, I will open up a new tab. And I will also connect to its default IP address, which is also 192.168.11.1. Similar to the last device, I'll get the first time um, set up your uh, admin username and password. So I'll go ahead and do that. You can use the same, which I recommend, or you can use different ones. It doesn't matter. And we'll connect in. And again, it'll ask me to log in with those new credentials. We can click the basic setup uh, area, and uh, this is where uh, part of the configuration gets a little bit advanced. Um, technically, you do not want to have two routers on your network, and you also can't have two devices with the same IP address, 192.168.11.1. So when we set up this second device as a slave, we want to make sure that we um, um, adjust our settings so they do not conflict with each other. Uh, since this is not the router and it's not connected to the internet, we need to give it an IP address that allows it to connect to the router to gain internet connectivity. Um, because of that, we will not be plugging the modem in directly to this device, so uh, we'll go ahead and disable the WAN connection, which is uh, the internet connection sharing feature. We're going to go ahead and disable that. We're going to go down to the bottom here, and we're going to change the router IP uh, from 192.168.11.1 to uh, another number so it doesn't conflict with the other device. Now, by default, these DDWRT routers from Buffalo um, start with a DHCP scope of 192.168.11.2 and then go to 64. So these are IP addresses that would be handed out to connecting clients. We do not want to give this second device um, an IP address that might conflict with the DHCP given one. So we'll pick a IP address for this that's outside of the scope of the uh, DHCP server on the other device. So I'm actually going to use uh, 192.168.11.254 as my uh, IP address here. So the router will be dot one, the lowest number in the subnet, and my access point will be dot 254, the highest number in the subnet. You can use any other number that you'd like, 99, 100, 200, etc. It's just something that you're going to want to remember at some point down the road if you have to go in and reconfigure these devices. Just don't make it dot one, which is the same as a router, or don't make it anything inside the DHCP scope. Now, if this router is going to connect to the internet for dynamic DNS or to get its uh, time server updated, uh, you're going to want to make sure you fill in the gateway information, uh, which is the same IP address as the router, which is dot .11.1. Uh, and DNS will proxy through that as well. So that way this uh, access point itself knows how to get out to the internet. Um, so if you're following along with my configuration, you would want your configuration to look like, uh, look like this. Um, 
go down, we also absolutely want to disable the DHCP server on the second device. Generally speaking, you do not want two DHCP servers on the same network, um, uh, definitely in a home setting because then they compete with uh, which IP, which device gives out the IPs, etc. So we'll definitely want to disable that, and we'll want to press save at the bottom. Do not press apply because if you press apply, you'll lose connectivity to this device and it'll make it very, very difficult. So you definitely just want to save the settings so we can apply them later, um, specifically when the WDS bridge is set up. So now we'll go into the wireless area and set up this wireless uh, WDS station to connect to the WDS AP network. So again, we'll go to the basic settings and we'll configure this wireless mode to be a WDS station. And again, we'll press save just so the uh, the rest of the settings change to be appropriate. Um, since I did not change the, the network mode or the uh, channel width on the previous device, I will not do it here as well. But if I were to, you would want to make sure these match 100%. Again, in the wireless network name, we want to match what the other one was, which was bridge. So it's easy to remember. Um, and we can press the save button. Now you'll notice some things like the channel selection uh, are not available here. That's because it is mandated by the WDS AP. So when this station connects to the bridge network, um, it will its channel will be dictated by the AP. Similarly, this one will not broadcast because it's a client-based connect connection. Now, in most cases, people will want uh, this device to act as a repeater and have its own wireless network. So we'll go and add uh, a virtual interface for this, um, which will allow it to have clients connect to it. Now, you can name this Buffalo-Network2 and have you know two different networks or Buffalo-Network upstairs if it's an upstairs-downstairs uh, environment. But uh, I recommend making it actually the same. And then your clients will only see one network, but the client driver and client software, um, and this is PC, Mac, tablet, smartphone, they'll automatically connect to the device that's stronger. Um, we'll also want to make sure that that SSID is broadcasting. So both your uh, units will broadcast the same SSID, so your users only see one device, uh, and they'll connect, and the client will, will actually automatically connect to the stronger network. So we'll go, go ahead and press save again. Uh, I must repeat, do not press apply as we'll lose connectivity. Uh, and then we'll go to the wireless security area. And here what we want to do is match the exact settings that we had uh, on the primary router, the 192.168.11.1, uh, which I fortunately remember as being WPA2 personal. Um, after you make your selection, um, go to the next one, select AES. Um, go ahead and unmask this. And the password was lowercase password. I'll go ahead and press save on that one just to get that one written into memory. And then for the Buffalo-Network, we selected WPA2 personal mixed mode and uh, TKIP plus AES. And uh, we selected 12345678, which my browser fortunately remembers for me. I'll go ahead and press save. Uh, we'll unmask both of these for this time. And this is where tab browsing comes in nicely. We just can uh, go ahead and verify really quickly that we have the same exact setting. WPA2 personal AES password, WPA2 personal AES password. Um, similar with the second network, WPA2 personal mix, TKIP AES, uh, and then the numbers. Uh, and we can see that the same is here. So at this point now, we can press the apply button, which will apply every single setting that we've uh, made to the second unit, including shutting off the router, changing its IP address, shutting down DHCP, uh, and setting up the bridge. So at this point now, uh, the devices should be communicating over a wireless bridge. So I generally recommend that you disconnect uh, from the AP device, or the WDS repeater, uh, and connect back into your router. So you can use the LAN cable and, and uh, move your, your PC or Mac to back into the um, other device. And we can go ahead and close this tab now because this is not even going to the right IP address anymore. Um, we can go back to our router device now um, and click on any, any page and uh, we're back connected to our router. If we go to the status area, we can actually see under the status wireless area if any devices are connected. And what we'll find here is that under this bridge mode, there actually is a device connected and you can see some of its rate sets, uh, very strong signal to noise ratio, um, 91, because they're right next to each other. So actually this, uh, network is, is already set up and that other access point, uh, WDS AP is connected. So if I open up a new um, uh, tab right now and I type 192.168.11.254, which is the access, uh, the WDS uh, station's IP address, um, I can actually connect into that one um, 
We can go to the status, I'll log in. And actually, I'm not physically connected to that device anymore. I'm connected to the router and then wirelessly um, over the IP network and over that bridge, I'm getting all of uh, its status information. So I can see from its wireless side, it's connected um, and some of its information. And again, this one, if we go back to the basic settings, uh, does not have routing mode and DHCP is turned off. Um, if you do uh, change any of these settings, it will disconnect it from the bridge and not reconnect, which makes uh, setting it up in the future a little bit more difficult. You would have to give a static IP address to your device. So um, if you change something on one side, you have to change it on the other. Generally speaking, I recommend changing it on the um, WDS station side first, like change the SSID to bridge two or something, then change it on the other side because it will automatically reconnect that way. But uh, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. I can go ahead and, and shut this down, and what I'll do is disconnect my uh, my wired network, and uh, you'll see when I scan for wireless networks here at the bottom, you'll see the, the Buffalo Network one, and I can go ahead and connect to it, and I believe the password for that one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oh, and uh, press OK, and we'll go ahead and connect to it. And uh, I have my connection here, I'm connected, and uh, I can go ahead and... Uh, open my browser and type in 192.168.11.1 and now I'm connected wirelessly um, and if we go to the wireless status page you'll, uh, you'll see that uh, only one device is connected to the access point um, I'm sorry to the wireless router uh, and if I go to the other IP address but it's status page, and I'll have to log in because these are two different devices. You can actually see that two devices are connected. This is the connection for the bridge, and then the 0.1 is a virtual interface, which is my actual uh, client device, which is connected. So my uh, PC automatically decided it should connect to the, um, the station access point rather than the router, which is the device that's slightly closer to me at the moment. So that pretty much concludes how to set up WDS between two uh, DDWRT-powered Buffalo Air Station routers. Thank you for watching this tutorial.